Hello, this is the 8th lab session of Computer Networks and this lab we will be dealing with the manipulating the circuit characteristics. So let's begin. So far we studied the circuit, how to create the circuit, then we studied various types of the TCP and UDP circuits and we also saw some examples such as the echo tcp echo udp and today's lab we are going to see something related to the circuits um, if we are able to set some parameters inside the circuit or we want to retrieve something from the circuit uh, for example we have this uh, table here we have some protocol we can change the circuit value on circuit level protocol or we can change it on IP level and we can also change it on TCP level so at each level we can um, get either get the value of the circuit or we can set the value of the circuit so what kind of values we can set here we, here is the list for instance at circuit level we can do we can set as much as this much of values using the circuit level or for the IP level we can use to we can set or retrieve this much of values using the IP level of the circuit or we can alter this much of values using the TCP. Set means that you can change the pre-existing value the value that is there before you can change according to your will and get value means that there is some value and you want to see what the value is and you can retrieve that value. Uh, however there are some restrictions for example there might be some option for example socket error so it cannot be changed it can be only set by the application or the program that you are running and any error like that if it happens you can only retrieve it but you cannot change it and it doesn't make any sense if you want to change the error right or the socket type like the communication type for instance it's also you can get it what kind of uh, communication type is there but you cannot set the value for the communication type when it is running already so there might be something that you cannot uh, set and there are something that you can retrieve at the circuit level you have several options for example the uh, option name socket sending buffer and the socket receive buffer so any system when you have a system you have some input coming in and you have some output giving out so when something is coming in it means that it is receiving and when something is receiving you always have some buffer so that the incoming data is buffered and then it is given to the system and when something is going out of that system uh, there is again some buffer and the value is loaded to that buffer before going out circuit sending buffer this option gets or sets the size of the output buffer in bytes and the circuit output buffer this option gets or sets the size of the input buffer um, and this is also in byte so the receive buffer is always in the at the input and the sending buffer is al always at the output side circuit reuse address this option control whether byte should permit reuse of your local address for this circuit if you enable this option you can actually have two circuits with the same internet port number but the system won't allow you to use the two identically named socket in a way that would confuse the internet. The reason for this option is some high level internet protocols uh, such as FTP and it requires you to keep uh, reusing the same port number. Then you have the keep allow and the socket keep allow option controls whether the underlying protocol should periodically transmit messages on a connected socket if the peer fails to respond to these messages, this connection is considered broken. And the circuit broadcast uh, options uh, controls whether the datagram may be broadcasted from the circuit. And similarly, you have the circuit don't route, which controls whether the outgoing messages bypass the normal message routing facilities. If set, messages are sent directly to the network interface. Then there is another one socket out of bound and line. This option is set. Out of bound data is received and the socket is placed in the normal input queue. This permit it to read or receive without specifying the message of flow that we may see it in the future. And then we have the socket error and the socket type uh, which cannot be set uh, as I mentioned earlier. The socket error this option can be used with the get socket only 
and it cannot be used with the set and it is used to reset the error status of the socket and the socket type option can be used with the get socket only again not with the set socket it is used to get the socket communication style which for instance like the tcp or the udp that kind of thing it is dealing then we have some ip protocol um, level and there are like type of service time to leave and other lot of uh, options and then you can not only retrieve it but you can set it as well and and the tcp level you also have like keep alive and no delay options etc and then again you can also retrieve it and you can set it uh, you should see like uh, related details on this page for the socket level and you can also Google for this kind of uh, protocol level options and names and see how they are reused uh, for further detail if you want to get more expert in socket programming. Retrieving the data from the socket options already define a socket before and once the socket is defined it will give you a socket descriptor. Keeping that socket de descriptor as the input argument of this get socket option which is retrieving the information from that socket and then you should define what level you want to change socket level or IP level or the TCP level and once you specify the level inside the level what options you want to change and then you have to specify it here and then once you identify that kind of options and then you should specify the value which is being retrieved and also the length of the value such kind of get socket option or set socket options they are all defined in the socket.h this option is used for retrieving the socket characteristics specified by the level and the option arguments and if you want to alter something inside the socket that you have defined before then you have to use this function and this function is used for specifying the socket characteristic on particular level and then you have to provide the option within that level and value as arguments and then the size of that value so here let's go to the code and after we are done with the code then i'll come and explain you how this thing works let's go to the uh, cyg win and from there you go to your own username so let us take one of the older example we have done previously and make some changes in that we don't want to start anything from the scratch. I'll save it as um, for example sock type and inside this sock type I will delete the unnecessary things um, for instance I won't require this one maybe I will declare some things so I'll change it later so let me delete all the unnecessary thing and if anything that is required then I'll just uh, write it again. Let's assume I'm using two type of the socket. One is the TCP sock and the other one is the UDP sock. Since I'm not using any buffer, so I should not use it. I should declare also a variable for the sock type that we will uh, use in the get socket option. And let's also uh, use the sock length. And finally, I will declare a variable if I have to use any condition. For example, I will say it's state. Since I use this variable, so this variable is actually identifying the size of the socket type that we have declared here. Now let's define both the TCP socket and the UDP socket. And the TCP socket is For the UDP socket, almost everything is similar, but uh, we only have to use a DG, D, datagram instead of the string. Prior to retrieving the type of the 
TCP SAC or the UDP socket, which is the SAC stream or SAC datagram respectively. We are going to print it here before. Then we will be retrieving the same value from the get socket function that I explained you earlier in the slides. So I can say the SAC stream And I'm also printing the SAC datagram here. So firstly, it will just uh, create a socket. And uh, once the socket and the file descriptor is saved here for the TCP and the file descriptor is saved here for the UDP, then I will just simply print out what is this what was the SAC stream and what what is the uh, SAC datagram. So those integer values will be printed out first. After knowing the value of this SAC stream and SAC datagram, then I'm going to retrieve the value from the functions. The, the first value is the any type of the file descriptor that we have used for the socket. So the file descriptor should be the first argument there. Then you have to define the level of the socket that you want to make changes in. So for example, we are using, we are going to make the changes at the socket level. So I will simply write the SOC level. If you want to make some changes at the IP level or the TCP level, then you have to correspondingly mention those kind of level here. And inside the socket level, then you have to specify what name of the value you are going to retrieve. In our case, for example, I am saying that what is my socket type? And then in the form of pointer, I have to specify the value that I have simply declared here which is the socket type and also the size of the value that I have just declared here so I will just copy it here let me copy the same thing that I did for the TCP and I will just simply change from the TCP to the UDP And I hope all the rest of the things are quite similar. And then I should provide the condition if any error handling is there, then it should be handled by the uh, program that, that, that we have defined here. So that should be taking care of it. And if there is no error, then I should simply take the value taken at this file descriptor and using the socket label which is SO type, which is saved here pointing to this integer value and it should be simply printed out. And I'll simply copy and paste it for the UDP type. instead of one I should just put two which means that this was the one and this one is the two now firstly we printed out what was the socket stream value and what was the data gram value and then we used the retrieving from the socket the get socket functions that I explained you earlier and from there we are going to see what was the socket type for the TCP type and what was the socket type for the UDP TCP and then simply I'm going to print it out. I'll just save it and, and let's see how this program works.
So here, uh, suck stream value was one, and the suck datagram value was two, and then we saw that the first value we had declared before was the suck stream, which was the TCP, which is same as this one, and the other value which was the UDP is suck datagram two, so it is same as this one. And if you further want to validate it, let's make some more changes in this one. And here, if instead of this one, if I just copy it and I just paste it. So, and both the programs, I'm talking about the TCP socket, but uh, if I just make it like before, And save it so the socket stream is the first one and the socket datagram which is the second one and then and both of the uh, programs I have only specified the TCP socket so let us see if it is retrieving the same value or different value and I'm expecting that uh, it should give me for example the socket stream value for both of them here so if I just simply do it see it is the socket stream is one and the socket datagram is two. But when I put the same the same value for the first one and both of the retrievings, then it will also give me the socket stream and then that will because both the programs are having the same value. So I hope this is a very basic program and I you already understood this part. So let's move forward to the next one. Uh, here again um, it's the same program so we defined the TCP the UDP then we printed out this first one the second one and then we just check for the TCP and then we check for the UDP and then we printed out and then that was the result that we just saw earlier now how about we do another program for retrieving and printing the internal buffer so this is the inside the socket level this is something related to the sending buffer and the receiving buffer we want to alter the values of the first we want to see what were the value there and then we want to alter the values and see what is happening there so in the first example we want to see what are the existing value and in the internal buffers for this buffer i should use the same program but with a little bit modification so i will just save it um, with a different name for example and get underscore buf and then inside this get and buffer i will make some changes and here for example i'm just using the tcp socket so i will leave the tcp socket and then i should need two values for example for the send underscore let's say i'm calling it snd underscore buffer for the send buffer and i'm using the recv uh, or rcv underscore buf and then yeah state is already there and mm, this one uh, is also uh, let me call it just a length not to confuse it with the previous one so again uh, since this is lint so i will just copy and paste it to make it the same name and then lin which is uh, for example keeping the value for the um, firstly for the tcp send and then uh, we will also use it for the other one again firstly for the uh, send buffer and the other one we will also use it for the uh, receive buffer so I'll just simply replace it with the receive buffer. So firstly, let's deal with the send buffer. For this one, I will copy this uh, whole syntax from here. And I will paste it simply here. But before that, I also have firstly to define the value of the socket. So for doing that, I will define the value for the socket. And now the TCP socket is defined here. It is a TCP suck stream. And after doing that, I will simply put the value here. And then um, instead of the SO type, I should simply type the SO, uh, which is the send buffer. So SND, uh, I guess it was SNDBUF. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. 
this this one value which is the value related to the send buffer and the length of the send buffer which is this one and i will paste it here so if uh, any error is happening there then there should be the get socket error and if there is no error then it should give me the value of the send buffer which should be here likewise uh, i should do all the steps the these steps for the uh, receive buffer too so i will copy the above lines uh, three lines for again and i will paste it here and if there is anything related to the uh, rcv buff so instead of the send buffer i should put the rcv buffer and also i, I will now use this one variable the, for the receive buffer that we have used and also the length of the receive buffer that i have used here and for this one it should just simply say me that what is the value for the receive buffer value and that's it i will delete the unnecessary lines that were related to the previous program and i will execute it now now let's execute this one and the name for this one is the uh what was the name oh get buffer so the name is this one and dot minus o and then i, I will call it simply buf and if i just print it out buf So here in my computer, um, I guess the sending and the receiving buffer, the value is similar. So it will just simply print it out the sending buffer similar and also the receiving buffer similar. Um, however, uh, we will see it in a while uh, when we are using the set socket function. There we will be changing the value for the sending buffer and also for the receiving buffer. Here, the, this was the program that we just saw earlier. So we created a socket and then we uh, put the sending buffer value, the variable that we declared here. And if there was any error, so it would be given to the error handling. And finally, it will be just printed out. And the same thing is done for the receive buffer and both the value are um, printed out. But in this case, uh, they have there are different computers. So uh, the value might be diff different, but but I'm using the same virtual machine. So that's why my values are different. If I'm using some and uh, Ubuntu or uh, real time terminal, then at that time, it will be it, it might be different. It can be similar. or It can be different. Now in this program, um, we will just see it in a while that rather than uh, using the pre-existing value how about we want to change or alter the value for the buffer uh, for the sending buffer and also for the receiving buffer so let us see how this code works I'll rename it uh, I'll again make a copy of this buffer and I will save it as this one and uh, for example I'm calling this one as the um, set buffer So um, let's make the corresponding changes. We want to make the sending buffer is uh, 1024 multiplied by three times. And then also I want to make a receive buffer value is equal to 1024. Uh, let me not keep it the same and I want to make it different. So my input buffer value will be two times of the 1024 bytes and the this is sending is 1024 three times and then let me keep everything like that then i'm creating a tcp socket and after creating the tcp socket uh, instead of get this get socket option i will now be using set socket option and for the set socket option i'm using again the same tcp socket and the sending buffer from uh, this protocol level and uh, after that I am again um, using the sending buffer and the receiving buffer value and 
and the same thing I'll be doing for the set uh, set circuit option again also for the receiving buffer and again I'm using those values that I just defined earlier for the sending buffer and the receiving buffer and after I'm good I'm done with that then uh, I have also printed the value for the send buffer which is uh, from here and also the value from the receive buffer which is this value uh, I think I should not print it uh, here uh, let me print it after I get the value again so uh, sorry I firstly I have to set the values and then I have to retrieve those values so I will just put it in the last since it is set so if you go and see the syntax uh, I should not use n again and now uh, after printing um, after making the changes in the buffer size let me retrieve those values using the get circuit option uh, so instead of set uh, here I'll be using the um, get option and I will also put n here because it's the retrieving function so uh, I hope that's that is it and then it will uh, simply write the value of the sending buffer which is here and also it will write the value of the receiving buffer so I hope it is uh, pretty clear firstly we set the values for the buffers and uh, we override the pre-existing values by using this socket level program and by using this uh, socket level and this option and after doing that we also used it for the receive buffer and when the values were changed as we defined here then I just retrieved the value back we saw that the previously the value was 6553 something like that but now since I have already changed the value so I'm expecting that my sending and receiver buffer should contain these two values rather than the value that I had seen earlier let us see if it is working I execute the S buff. So uh, three times of the 1024, which is the circuit type one, which means that the sending buffer, it means that it is the value of 3072, which is the output buffer. And circuit type one. Oh, sorry for this confusion. Uh, it's not the circuit type. Instead, I should make it um, proper word. So sending buffer and also the receiving buffer here and let me run it again so the sending buffer value which is three times of the 1024 which was here it is um, you should use the calculator and uh, it should be equal to 3072 and the other one was two times of the 1024 which is equal to 2048 we use the set socket and then assign some value and then we use the set socket for the assign some value for the receiving and sending buffer and after doing that we just retrieve those values and th the values were altered unlike before we had some other type of values now let's see one more interesting is example and after that I'm expecting that uh, you will have good understanding related to the manipulating the sockets and then you can do some more changes try to have some different experiments then you can use the uh, different experiments using the uh, IP level of protocol and or the TCP protocol level and then you can use the options like that so in order to be a good so socket programmer you should do some more practice on these options all of these options when a socket is created between the two hosts uh, for example the server in the socket uh, both of them undergo through a certain waiting time and this waiting during this waiting time both the socket server and the socket client they should retain the pre-existing uh, port address and also their IP addresses and if instantly uh, if the server is uh, called off 
then at that point the server cannot bind to that uh, uh, particular IP address and also the port address instantly so whenever the socket is bind to a port address or the IP address this address is kept for some longer time and this longer time is the waiting time and it's up to 30 seconds to 2 minutes so during this waiting time the socket has occupied this uh, address and this a particular address and port cannot be bound to another socket unless it is disconnected for instance we have a client and then we have a server the clients and a server board are bound to some uh, port address and also the IP addresses this socket will be bound to the addresses uh, for a certain waiting time and if any of the host for example this server is forcefully turned off or th this is called off from the socket then it has to wait for around 30 seconds at least to be reused that address uh, until and unless if it is turned off uh, forcefully right at that time when you want to reassign that particular port address and the IP address it could not be assigned to it why because there is still the waiting time running for that port address and the IP which was there before and once that waiting time is not over it can be not reallocated or not reassigned to get rid of this constraint there is an option in the socket level which is socket re reuse address and if we make this option true then we can reuse that address even if instantly a server is turned off and right at that time you can reassign the same address to that particular uh, socket you can bond the socket again to the same address I think it's quite tricky now to explain it in words but when now when we see some example it will be quite clear And this waiting time basically it's for the high level of the program such as the file transfer protocol when you are sending some file to a remote server you keep continuing to send the files in chunks Bo both the server and the client should retain their uh, port and IP addresses and if someone accidentally or forcefully turned off the server side or either the client side then there is certain waiting time and for that that waiting time is ranging from 30 seconds to 2 minutes and during that time that particular TCP port can, cannot be reassigned to the socket again. For this one I'm not going to use the uh, windows because uh, I'm using the virtual machine and for the virtual machine I cannot have any kind of that problem but if you are using the Ubuntu any Linux based uh, operating system like uh, Ubuntu or Mac operating system then uh, you will have definitely this problem because in that case uh, you are using the real-time uh, server uh, clients so let us have an example on the Mac operating system and I'm using the same uh, echo TCP client and echo TCP server I'm using the same echo TCP client and the uh, echo uh, TCP server uh, let's suppose uh, the server uh, initially I'm using it just normally I have declared the integers and then I have commented this option I want to see the actually what the problem is so that you can understand the problem first and after that I will enable this one and then we will see that uh, when I when we set this option how can we get rid of that problem I have created a socket which is a TCP then I bound it with a TCP and IP and then after binding it I'm listening to the port and uh, firstly I'm reading from the client and once I have a message coming from the client then I am writing it back towards the client which is which means that the client message is coming to the server and this, it is bouncing it back towards the client and similarly client is simply a, an echo client that we had seen in the previous examples so it is just writing a message towards the server and once the server bounces back the message uh, in the form of echo then the, it is reading it back so uh, let us see how, I, how it works and then we will make some changes in it so I will open up two command terminals one for the uh, server side and the other for the 
uh, client side let's assume this is my server side and this one is my client side so to run the server uh, i should simply read a command for to make an object file first so gcc since it is under desktop so firstly uh, i will go to the desktop and also here i will go to the desktop now i will simply create an object file for both the client and the server and likewise i will make create a an object file for the client side so I should have the server and client yeah I have this one server here and also I have this one client let's assume I'm uh, starting the server at port number 4444 and then I'm initiating the client side uh, using the uh, 127.0.0.1 IP and the port number which is 4444 so it's already connected and if I write down anything it is received here and then it is bounced back to the uh, client side again so anything I, if I write here, it, it can be bounced back from the client again. And if, for example, I want to terminate this at the uh, middle, for example, here I just terminated it and I re want to initiate the server with the same port number. And if I do that, if I want to do that, it will be giving me a band error because there is a waiting time now. And the server has to maintain that waiting time and if I want to reband with that particular port number it will give me an error and though it is uh, already assuming that the previous server is running but in fact it is not running so if I want to send some message there will be no message back from there again I want to send something and there will be it will be just quit why because it cannot make any connection even because the server is uh, with bind errors uh, I have already cancelled it and it cannot have the message back from there so again uh, it's quite much time uh, let me check if I can do it yeah now I can do it I can I think those 30 seconds are passed away and I can reinitiate the uh, server again but if I cancel this one then this this will be an error but if at the same time if i want to create the server at another port it's it will be established and then i can connect to that server using the client side and again i can contact with that one so if i and i cancel this one now I cancel this one and again want to create it instantly there will be a band error for at least 30 seconds but the other one which was having the band problem before it is still having the band problem so I think that time is not finished yet see I will keep doing it yeah now that time is finished that wait time is finished and now I can do it so now I can again contact with this server and I will cancel it and I will just re-establish connection with that one this is happening when we don't have that option enabled at the server side so if I have this option for example the um, I have an option I will just make it true and I will use this uh, socket level uh, protocol and then inside the socket protocol socket level protocol I will reuse this flag which is the reuse address and initially by default it is uh, false but uh, I have defined it true and true I have defined what is the value of truth so the value of true is one so it will set the flag for the reuse 
and then I will simply save it and now I can reuse the port uh, even if I cancel it and I can instantly reuse it again so I will just cancel this one port and I will let me clear the desktop Now uh, I want to initiate the server again at the port number 4444 and I want to uh, create, connect uh, the client also with that server. So I have this one uh, still going on, the messages are bouncing back and I want to cancel the server instantly. Once I cancel the server and I instantly want to reconnect it. What? Oh sorry, sorry, I didn't uh, compile it, sorry. Firstly I have to compile it and then I have to run it. So let me recompile that one and also let me although i didn't make any changes but just i want to recompile it too and now i want to make a connection from the server and i from the client side i'm connecting it and if i write anything like that it is still connected there but i want to cancel this server and i want to reconnect it like that so it is reconnected without having any bind error because the bind which was caused before now now because of this i can now reuse that address even after i uh, terminate the server forcefully so that server address can be reused because this flag is up now and i can just uh, anytime if i want to send a message uh, sorry i have to cancel it and then I, I have to connect it again and then i can just simply reuse it and i can cancel it again and i can reuse it again so in this case i don't have to wait for that time wait time which which was at least 30 seconds for the previous case and i was having a bind error but uh, when we have this option enabled then we don't have to wait for that time waiting options because in that case you can instantly stop it and instantly start it so there uh, as we saw in this uh, beginning slide they, there are other couple of options and uh, i would strongly recommend you to just make some changes there will be a lot of uh, options you can find it in the internet and also online help so you can just use them all if possible or couple of them try to have as much practice as much possible you retrieve the values and also set the values and then retrieve the values and do some practice on it get a better insight of manipulating the socket characteristics so that's all for today and i'll see you in the next lab thank you so much for your attention